Hello and welcome to the channel. This is part 4 of the Excel VBA tutorial for beginners. In this video, we'll work with the range object. The range object represents a container of cells in a worksheet, which are the ultimate recipient for the data in Excel. As we've seen in previous videos, we refer to a range in a worksheet with range followed by the address with the column letters and row numbers surrounded by double quotations in the parentheses, as you can see here. But let me show you in the VBA editor. I'll add here sub range object and range A1 D4 select and I'm going to use the select method to make it visible in the worksheet for now. We will talk about other properties and methods later. We can refer to several groups of cells using a comma separator between each range. So range A1D4 comma F6H12 and if we run that, that we will get both uh, groups of cells. And we can also refer to a named range by simply putting the name in double quotations. And that would be, for example, range, um, my range, select or whatever. I'll comment that because we don't have such a name range uh, now, and it will prompt an error. And you probably know by now that we can use the apostrophe to add commentary uh, to the code or while testing to not run some parts of the code. We can refer to any selected range simply with selection. If no range is selected, the selection is just one cell, which is the active cell, referred to as active cell in VBA code. So we could write selection, copy. This would copy whatever range is selected or active cell dot copy or any other method or property that would refer to the cell which is active at that moment. We can refer to the entire row or column with either the range object or the rows and columns properties as follows. So I could write range a a select and that would be the same of writing columns A select or columns one select. And the same for rows. We could write range two, two uh, select. And that would be, uh, it would be easier to write rows two uh, select, for example. And as we've seen earlier, we need to follow the object hierarchy to reference the range in other worksheet or workbook. Otherwise, the range refers to whatever sheet and workbook is active when running the macro. So if we want to select the range in sheet two, we would write worksheets sheet two range A1, D4, select. And if you want to select a range in other workbook, we just add here workbooks, uh, for example, book two. Okay, we can also just select one cell with a range. We would say range A1 uh, select, right? But we can also use cells. The cells property of the range object returns a cells object that represents a single cell within the range, and it has an item property that allows to refer it with two numerical parameters, the row number and the column number. Uh, generally, the item property is omitted and cells is used alone with the given row and column numbers in parentheses. So this uh, range B3, whatever, uh, select or whatever we want to do with this, it would be the same than writing cells dot item and three comma two. So first the row and then the column or simply cells three comma two. 
Okay? Um, the offset property is used to reference a cell located a particular number of rows and columns from that range. So for example, range A1 dot offset 3, 4. And we select that. This offsets three rows and four columns from the range. So if I play that, let me comment those other things. Um, we get cell E4. A very useful property is current region. It represents the region with data around a, re a given range or cell, which is bounded by blank rows and blank columns. So let's move to C2. I have some data here, and I'll have other procedure also. Um, let's call it sub range properties. And if we write range a1 dot current region and for example we select we're gonna get the whole region with data let's play it so this is a very useful uh, property if we have a large data set and we want to select or copy or you know work with with dynamic data like uh, imagine we receive files every day with data we want to copy, uh, sometimes it's just a few rows, sometimes it's more, it's dynamic, so we can use current region. Then we have the address property, which returns the reference to the absolute range as text. So in this example here, we could, instead of selecting, we could write address, and if we put that in a message box, we're gonna get the absolute address as text. See, we can also count the number of cells in a range with count or the number of rows or columns if we combine with, with those properties. So range A1D8.count, that would give um, 32 cells. Now we could change it to dot rows dot count, and that would give eight or column, columns.count, that will give four. As we've seen earlier, the value property is a read-write property of the value of a cell or a range. We can get or give the value. The value can be any type of data or a predefined variable. We'll talk more about variables in the next video. Let me show you range a1 dot value equals 10 and I'm gonna move to the previous sheet here or you know range b2 dot value equals um, salary this is a string and if we write double quotations like empty double quotations like this um, then we clear the, the value of the cell. Okay, the font property of the range returns a font object that can take several other properties such as name, size, color, style. So we could write range A1 to H20 dot font dot name equals Arial, for example, or or we could say size, font.size equals 14. And let me play that, but in this other sheet, so you see now we get a bit uh, bigger font here. So the interior property returns the interior object or background of the cell. We can change the interior color or pattern. There are a few other properties, but those are the ones I use mostly. And then, we have the borders property, which represents the third part of the cell along with font on interior. Some of the properties for borders include uh, the line style, the, the weight, and, the, and of course the color. So now let's talk about color and let's see how color works in VVA. The color and also the color index properties can be applied to set the color of the font, of the interior, and of the borders objects. And of some other VVA objects too. There are 
different ways to do that. So the simplest way is using the Excel VV color, which has a range of only eight colors. So let me show you here. You see those are the eight colors with VV color. Other possibility is using the color index property, which allows for 56 basic colors, as you can see here. So we could write range A1, A12, dot font, dot color, equals VV red. That would change the color of the font to red. So let's move to this sheet. And if we play it, we get, um, we get now the font uh, in red. We could actually do the same using color index. Let me change it here. Equals three. So, and that's the number for red in the color index um, table. Or if we just change this number to um, some other number, let's say 28, I don't know what that's uh, going to be. So that's the color. But we can have more colors using, I mean, 56 may work sometimes, but we, we may want to have more colors. So we can do that with the RGB function, which takes the red, green, and blue components of the color with a number between 0 and 255. So we could write, and that works with the color property, um, range and interior dot color equals RGB. And then in the parentheses, if I write 255, comma, 0, 0, that's going to be red, OK? Because it has the red component to the maximum value. So that's going to be red. But um, we can just change and get thousands of different colors. OK, now let's have a look at some methods of the range object. Let me add a new module here and also a new sub. I'll call it range methods. We've seen already how to select the range or cell. We can also use activate to change the active cell in the selection. If nothing is selected, activate works uh, like select. So. I can write range d4h8.select. And if I play, we've seen that already. Then we can have range f6 activate. And you see it changes the active cell from, um, from d4 to f6. OK. Um, Activate and select work slightly different with worksheet and workbook objects. We can select several worksheet objects, but can only activate one. And workbook objects can only be activated. Now let's see how we copy a range or, or cells. Um, and we use the copy method for that. So we just simply write range a1d4.copy. OK, and then we can paste it in any given range in the same or in other worksheet with the paste special method of the range object. So we write, we just put the first cell, or we can also have the whole range, paste special. But we can also use uh, the range destination attribute of the copy method to do that. And then we can do that in just one line of code. So we would write then range a1d4 copy space range h1. So in just one line of code, we will do the copy paste operation. So let's see how that works. I'm going to use the data in, uh, in sheet two. And it's going to copy in the same sheet. Now, in We've talked about that several times. If we want to paste that in other worksheet, then we need to specify the work worksheet object. So let's change this to sheet one. So it's going to copy in sheet two, because we are, at the moment of running the macro, we are in sheet two. But then it's going to copy the contents in sheet one. And, and, and let me change the range. Um, 
A1. Then we have the clear method, uh, which removes the content and the format of a range. So we would write simply range, uh, this one, A1 to what we just copy. Now we're going to clear. We can remove only the content with uh, the clear contents method or only the format with the clear formats method. So let me show you. Um, we're going to remove the formats in sheet two because we've made a mess here with all the red colors. So if I write range A1 and, for example, current region, so we make sure it takes everything and then dot clear formats. Uh, when I play it, you see it removes um, the whole formatting. It removes the color and many other formatting that we didn't really do, uh, like the number format and things like that. So it removes all the formats, uh, borders if there are any, everything. And, and then finally we have the delete method. Uh, and of course it deletes the content and the format and the cells itself. Um, and therefore it shifts any other cells around to fill up the gap we can add an argument to indicate which direction those cells around will move. So for example, range, let's say B2 to B, this, and delete, and then XL to left, this will shift um, the, cells on the, on the, uh, the cells to the left, like that. So that's how we use the range object and what properties and methods apply to the range. But to create a real program, we need to understand the pillars of any programming language. And those are variables and conditions and loops. We'll talk about VBA variables in the next video. See you there. <laughs>